go mix in soil. So we are the largest mammals on this quarter acre permaculture plot. So it makes sense to recycle our nutrients. They're the largest here. We also have ducks and chickens and quails, and of course goats in the forest nearby. Uh, but it, it really makes sense to close the poop loop. Um, and so artists' family have been doing that for a number of years now, but we've never made a film about it. I guess after all these years of growing annual vegetables, perennial vegetables, uh, in the soil that we make from our own human waste. Um, we uh, have the kind of experience and understanding of the bi biology to make it um, safe. So what we have is good old gut in intuition that what we're doing is um, within the realms of the laws of nature. And that is biology, 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 as I've said recently in another video. Uh, so making human your compost is really easy for uh, once you're set up. So we have three bays um, uh, and the fourth bay over here is the carbon bay. So carbon is anything like straw or sawdust, um, leaves, um, anything, uh, even uh, shredded newspaper, um, anything is that's dying um, organic matter. Uh, or decomposing organic matter, or dry organic matter in the case of straw, um, is uh, carbon. The next thing, so our composts are around 20 parts carbon and one part nitrogen, which is humanure and sometimes some comfrey for about six or seven months of the year. We've had our first frost here this morning, so this comfrey will be disappearing from the garden very soon. Comfrey is like a really great fiber. It, uh, it's like a starter. Um, it, it attracts beneficial microbes. When we think of like eating alliums uh, and what they do as a pro, uh, sorry, a prebiotic in our guts, they create a medium for um, beneficial probiotics or microbes to uh, live and eat from and then the third stage of that is postbiotics, which is the shit of the probiotics. Uh, and all of those things are really excellent um, in, uh, in a system such as a gut and a system such as this gut, which is a compost. They're both doing the same thing. And the great thing about human manure is that it, it's already passed through a gut. It's already passed through a system of, of deep, of breaking down. So we find our human manure uh, soil, uh, which is just here, this beautiful, luscious material um, breaks down. Um, within six months, we have this um, m material. The other ingredient that we put, or the other two important ingredients, are, are water to mist each layer that we build the compost, which I'm just about to show you, and tiger worms. So comfrey, tiger worms, water, carbon, nitrogen and air and air comes about by having a range of different carbons which trap air in air pockets held by the carbon so this is uh, hard Australian hardwood um, saw chips and this is straw that's um, we get for a little bit of straw we don't like to be reliant on any kind of monoculture but we do buy some straw for chicken bedding. We also um, uh, buy uh, spelt grain and some lentils from a biodynamic farm and some oats as well. So there are a few things that we are still dependent on monocultures, but mostly this is a garden agriculture ecology and we like to have diversity. Diversity and biodiversity are the spices of life, the key to life, the key to spirit. So. Um, what I'm going to do before I add this bucket, which I've just taken out of the house, this is the family uh, poo bucket. I mean, the other thing um, that I want to speak about that is that uh, shitting in a bucket may not seem very revolutionary, 
um, it might seem more revolutionary to uh, put on a bandana and swing a MK47 on your shoulders and, and go and take out the next, that, you know, the, the, the oppressor. Uh, and then, you know, fill that power vacuum with another monological or crazy um, power structure. But if we see permaculture as the quiet revolution that can take place in the spiritual and sacred domains of our homes and our communities, uh, the revolution is slow and steady. It's not radical and fierce and, um, and uh, um, kind of um, toppling one regime to replace another. So shitting in a bucket is, is uh, a revolutionary act. It, it means that we are taking full accountability for ourselves as creaturely animals in, in uh, a place. What I'm going to do first is provide a layer of um, uh, mist, mist a layer to create humidity. So this is like a lasagna composting. Um, you might want to come in here, Andy, and just sort of have a look in, yeah, get into there. You can see the dryness of the straw on the edges. So I want to really pay attention to wetting the edges. Oops, there's a little mouth. Then I'm going to put a, a layer of uh, comfrey. We have a lot of comfrey growing in the garden for this reason. As I said, it makes a really good starter, uh, activator. We don't do comfrey with every layer that we do, maybe four or five layers of comfrey um, per compost. And it usually takes about two months to fill this. Um, so some of it has matured for uh, just four months, and then some for six months. And so the younger stuff which we're going to do in a minute. So this is ready. I've just cleared the last of this compost out of this bay. So this is going to go on a new bed. Um, and then this one, which is the, this sort of top layer is the most recent, that will get flipped and the younger stuff goes on the bottom and the most mature stuff on the top. And what that does in the, in the next month is rapidly speed up the process of breakdown so that um, once we get to that six month mark, it's just perfect and ready to go. This is not hot composting. So it's um, not like getting a super hot compost and yet we're getting this in six months. Perfectly safe, beautiful soil, uh, beautiful humus, beautiful compost. So also Andy, I, I thought we'd have a look at this little ink cap mushroom coming up here. Obviously we wouldn't eat this, but this is an edible mushroom. See these ink caps, there's a few of them coming up. Um, oh, I thought I saw another one this morning. But, the back as well. Yeah, oh, here we go, yeah. Um, so there, they are an edible mushroom, um, but obviously we wouldn't eat it out of here. So um, in a minute I'm going to change that, but I th think we'll go back to finishing off uh, the, the compost here. So then I have my bucket of uh, sawdust. So every time someone from the ha house uh, does a poo in the bucket, it gets covered over with a cup or two of sawdust and that just completely um, diminishes the smell. So we can have this system in the house. Um, we do have two outdoor uh, composting toilets as well. Um, I think Woody's gone up there just to use it and. Hey Woody, I, I'm um, I'm actually down here with the bucket. You'll you'll need to use one of the outdoor ones. Yeah, you won't be able to. <laughs> oh, you better ha have a run. Go for a run. So this just gets distributed. Um, in the Human Your Handbook, which I highly recommend, 
the author talks about, Jenkins talks about uh, um, the importance of digging like a little hole, uh, which is where the heat is and then you're in the middle, but we don't, we just um, uh, find that it works just as well to um, just distribute it evenly across the space. These composts are about 900 by 1100 by about a, a meter up. So a meter by a meter or a meter cubed is a good size for compost. Uh, as I got this straw out to show you, I may as well use a bit of this. But we, yes, as we use uh, leaves in autumn, so we'll be raking up a whole lot of leaves. We use uh, sawdust from the local um, furniture makers and, and uh, sustainable saw millers. Um, and we, uh, as I said, we grow a lot of earth uh, tiger worms and a lot of comfrey. So everything is basically um, local and Oh, another reason for doing this is, um, yeah, there's, a, there's quite an argument uh, about where we are with phosphate rock. And some people say we're at peak and it's irreplaceable. And phosphate rock, of course, is one of the major ingredients in industrial agriculture. And uh, Nauru, for example, at the island was, you know, it was a boom and bust economy where the world just stripped mined um, uh, their phosphate rock, which is built over many, many, many thousands, if not uh, millions of years of um, basically seabirds pooing uh, year after year after year, building up this incredible resource. And we've basically um, stripped the earth of most of the um, phosphate rock for, you know, within a century. Um, so that makes, while there's other places where phosphorus can come from, uh, it's, um, it, you know, it's just another example of rather than getting your food from a system that has to strip mine, um, little, uh, island states like Nauru and, and now they're after that strip mining and they're boom to bust, they're now selling their land as a prison to the Australian government, which of course is, you know, part of the, 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 the sort of boom bust Ponzi scheme of, of, in, uh, industrial culture. It's just part, another little story or narrative there. So yeah, so bringing all our accountability back into our domestic spaces, which is why, um, which led us to permaculture in the first place. So, um, right, now what I'm gonna do is uh, get some serious amount of carbon on top of there. So I'm gonna put some in the bucket. So we don't, um, we separate our urine. That's the other important thing. We put that into a bucket and we uh, make activated biochar uh, with the urine. Um, so that is a great system. And that's another thing that we do put in here in about four or five stages of this, the development of, of a single compost. We'll put four or five layers of activated biochar. That means charcoal that's come out of the fire the potash sifted from it, the char pounded with a crowbar and then activated with human urine. To um, basically, the reason for doing that, we, uh, we explain that actually in another film, so you can go and check that out. Uh, so that's one bucket. So keeping the urine out means that uh, it's got enough with the manure and we don't over supply the compost with nitrogenous material. Although Jenkins in his book, um, his technique is you don't need to separate it, which is absolutely fine. You don't need to. We just find it. It works for us the way we do it. And then I'll just do one more. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to mist this, these layers. <clears throat> this 
So just taking a little bit of the air out of, of it. It's really spongy. Last layer on there. Great. So when you're not speaking this, it's about a five minute process, maybe um, twice a week for a little bucket like this. So now I just clean this bucket out. Before we started composting like this, we used to, I guess, refer to ourselves as fecophobes, uh, which I think we belong to a culture of fecophobes. But um, because of the results that this compost gives us, we call ourselves fecophiles now. So we're literally in love with shit because shit uh, can build this, can make this. And this is the basis of our economy. So this uh, bay has just been emptied, as I said, with the last of the mature stuff. Uh, this, these little things just sit in here so it makes easy access. Now I'm just gonna start filling up here. Because we've got a gateway here, um, which is really handy to get under the house to store things, um, it is a bit of a distance. So when we're doing I say this one to here or this one to here, it's much, much easier. But um, anyway, we'll just hook into it. Nicely apart. Just have a look at the profile here, Andy. The worms. Just this is actually the less mature, this is only maybe a couple of months and it's virtually soil. Now, I don't think this is a uh, fungus. I think this is actually a mycobacteria, but I, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a beneficial um, bacteria that's prevalent in compost. Less than 1% of bacteria species are actually harmful to humans. Well, did you ever miss this stage as well? What's that? Do you miss this turning stage? Missed? I missed it, no. Mm. Unless okay. it, yeah, good question. Unless it needs, uh, unless it's been dry for some reason. We have a lot of volunteers that come here and sometimes uh, we don't communicate the whole procedure and a step gets missed and we'll find that um, quite a big section is dry. Then we'll definitely missed it in this section. And it's very forgiving. All of our systems are very forgiving. <laughs> it's biology. So it's a one turn compost. We only do this turning once and then it's ready. So it makes it pretty, it basically 
99% of the work is being done by microbes and um, moisture and decomposition and tiger worms and basically the creating the right environment really is about 1% of the work because it's like as I said it's about uh, a five minute job to empty the buckets and layer twice a week so that's 10 minutes a week then it's probably half an hour job to um, come down and turn the compost and then basically putting it on the garden so it's pretty much uh, Just this stuff is so beautiful. Uh, let me put some more uh, sides up. So, um, and this warmth is obviously makes great habitat for mice. And so we, um, we often take the lid off and throw Zero up there and he gobbles a, a mouse or two, or we fork a mouse and feed it to the chickens and the ducks who love it and gobble them up. If you're interested in a different, a different uh, theory of life than the germ theory. It's worth checking out um, terrain theory. And terrain theory, in a nutshell, is science that demonstrates that if we are in actively involved in biological systems with many diverse players where we're just one, uh, that's the basis of human health. Whereas germ theory says, everything out there is dangerous. Put on rubber gloves, spray, 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 uh, and lock yourself away from the world. And then pharmaceutical companies can make billions out of that fear. Um, and everyone gets sick and everyone becomes really vulnerable. Germ theory has served us well for some uh, parts of science. But the fact that it's the overriding theory is just basically complicit um, with the dominant economic paradigm. <clears throat> Make people frightened and that gets them spending. So this is, this is the reward you get for shitting in a bucket, for putting your fecophobia phobia aside and embracing your inner fecophile. file. And yeah, this is the, the gift. So many people are trying to work out the problems to the world particularly environmentally and politically and uh, not realizing that it actually starts with how we are in the world, the, what we give to, what we serve, what we're involved in, the relationships that we have. Pretending that new technology and money will solve the issues. And of course, they're the things that are driving the problem. So if you continue to serve money as your complete economy, 
you won't have time to make this gold. And that's the difference, I think, by staying at home, working just enough to pay the rent, and then, um, yeah, the rest is relationships. We always leave about this much of this gold, and there's tiger worms already in here. So this is what I call a starter. So there's enough there, there's probably a bucket, or even more than a bucket of beautiful, uh, almost mature compost with lots of tiger worms in it. And then we start building the next compost from there. So let's go and uh, take the, let's go and take the soil out to the, um, to the garden bed. But first of all, I just want to make mention of this. What we do with this bucket is simply hose it out, tip it into the compost, and then go and put it in the sun. We try, try to choose a sunny day to do this, and the sun just cleans the whole thing out. Then we put um, a few inches of uh, saw, saw chips in, and then we start again, and it goes straight back in where it came, and then we just fill it up again. So I'm gonna put that in the sun, and take this around to So this is a no-dig garden. So what we've done is just simply taken out the last crop, the zucchinis and the gherkins, and uh, we've uh, taken out the weeds with a, just a slice into the soil and then pulling out if the, if the weeds are quite well-rooted, like there was some um, dock in here that were quite significant. So just one slice into the soil to uh, loosen it and then pull it out and then just dress with effectively humus. Human, you're a human. Squaring off the top. Take the rounded mess off the top. This morning, oh my god, oh. this morning, ah oh damn, I knocked the top off, bugger. This morning um, was the first frost, so this pumpkin vine is in decline. But have a look at the size of that Jaredale. And this was growing alongside another couple of pumpkins. Um, 
in a meter of humanure soil. So this is the sort of nutrient return that you get for shitting in a bucket. <laughs>